Hello everyone, welcome to a new video of Make What You See in the Shops and this will be a swimsuit edition. And of course we start with the inspiration. I saw these pictures on Instagram. The left one is a picture from H&M and the right one is from Chalcedonia, if I say that right. And of course what uh, caught my eye were the ruffles uh, on the top and on the bottom uh, sides. Um, I like how, they, how that looks so I would like to recreate it. Um, last year I bought a, top, a swim top from uh, Hollister with uh, an off the shoulder top. Um, and that was very annoying because you couldn't uh, lift your arms so I'm a bit uh, insecure about the top uh, on the left which I really like but um, in this one she can uh, lift her arm very much up so uh, I can only do it I only want to do that when I found an elastic that is really stretchy enough to make a top like that uh, if the elastic is not stretchy enough that's the one that I have now then I will only do the ruffle along the top and not an off the shoulder over the shoulder. So depending on what uh, elastic I can find now, uh, it's depending how I want to uh, make it. The right one is the same. It looks more like a feathery thing. So well, I'm not sure if we can recreate that ourselves, but I really like it. So maybe I'll do that later on uh, in the swimsuit. But I saw already another white swimsuit that I really like. So maybe that will be the next one for this. So what I want to make is uh, the top of the shoulder, if I can find a more stretchy elastic. Um, and if I can find uh, a thinner fabric uh, together with what I already have, but that is too thick to make uh, a double folded ruffle. So if I can find a thinner fabric, I will make the double uh, ruffle. If not, then I will make just a single uh, strand of uh, fabric for the ruffle. But then you have to cut that really neat because otherwise this, the edges are not that clean. So I hope I can find a more thinner fabric to make uh, the double ruffle as the H&M uh, top has. The bottoms I would like to make um, more high waisted than this one because I think that's more flattering. So I'll uh, cut that more high than, than this one from H&M. So that will be uh, the design how I would like uh, to make it. Okay, I'm gonna film this now for the fifth time because my camera keeps confusing this uh, video filming this. Um, it keeps flipping the images, I don't know why. So I'm trying now to do this upside down. So I hope you don't get confused. I hope I don't get confused, but I think after five times I can do this blindfolded. So <laughs> let's start with the pattern. Um, maybe you uh, saved the measurements from the last um, tutorial. You don't really need it now, but with the picture I can maybe better explain what you have to do. Uh, because uh, the first time, a uh, former time, you measured all around the bust. Now you only measure from left to right. So I say from the side seam of your top to the other side seam of the top. From left to right. And for me that was 47 centimeters. So you draw a straight line across 47 centimeters. And because the material is very stretchy, because it's, it's swimwear material, uh, you have to take off 5 centimeters because, uh, because it's a top without straps, uh, it has to be watertight, otherwise it will fall down. So you measure yourself, 47 centimeters for me, and you take off 5 centimeters. So the straight line will be for me 42 centimeters. Then you measure it yourself how high you want the sides to be. I took 8 centimeters, you can take more, I wouldn't take less because uh, it, have, it has its strength from the side seam, so don't make it too small. And then you measure how high you want it in the front. I like it to have this curve. Uh, you can also do it straight across if you like that. And if you don't have too big boobs, um, that's whatever you like you, you take. I took as measurement 16 centimeters in the middle. Then what you do, you cut it out. You hold it against your chest and you mark where your nipples are. So you put a, a cross or a point on the pattern where your nipples are because we need to know where that is because that's the end of the darts we're gonna make to give form on uh, the uh, fabric and the lining. So that's your front pattern. The back is very easy. You measure your own back also from left to right from the back. For me that was 40 centimeters, a straight line. 
uh, also you take off five centimeters because of the stretch of the fabric <coughs> and the sides must be the same as the front top so I have the same age if you had 10 on the front top then you have to be 10 on the back and you measure how low you want to be the middle if you want it low you can also to, to uh, draw it straight across I give it a little dip in the center so mine is in the middle six centimeters so that's the pattern of the back so for the bottoms it's easiest when you uh, take uh, bikini bottoms that fit you very well it doesn't matter if the shape is right or if you like it the only thing that matters is that it match it fits you perfectly uh, if you don't have a bikini bottoms that fit you perfectly you can also take uh, just normal underwear but then don't take a lace one or something the fabric must be a bit similar as uh, the bikini fabric so take a sporty underwear or something like that uh, the only thing that really matters is that the fit is perfectly so what you do is you mark the middle line of the front of the bottoms and make sure that the crotch seam is straight on the bottom then you place again a straight line on the paper and you align the, the middle line of your bottoms with that line on your paper then you're gonna trace the bottoms you just traced all around to the other side then you can take it off well, I made this the beginning bottoms myself but I want the next one this one to be different so I want it to be more high waisted and when I put it on I measured how high I want it to be uh, other than this beginning bottom so I want it five centimeters higher so I mark five centimeters above the line that I just traced and I align that with the side that I just traced what I also want is that the uh, leg opening is a bit higher it was down here so I am gonna trace it a bit higher about a centimeter higher and I combine it to here don't go too far down because otherwise the, the crotch will be too small so Watch out how far you take it uh, in. But the sides will always be the same. So this is then the new pattern. Make sure that you see what the new line is and what the old line is. So make the new line a bit thicker. That you don't cut the wrong lines. Because otherwise your pattern won't be right. That's for the front. <coughs> well the back is almost the same. Again, draw a straight line on your paper. Mark the mid middle line of your bottoms align that with the line on your paper make sure the crotch line is straight down and again trace around the bottoms and take it off uh, the back is uh, more high than the front in my case of my bikini bottoms so I don't have to add five centimeters I only add about two and a half and I connect it with the side seams. The leg opening in the back for me is okay. I don't like the cheeky bottom, so uh, I like the one that I made before. So I leave this the same as for my former bottoms. So that's the pattern of the bottoms. Very easy. So I've cut out the fabric and the lining. Uh, as a fabric I have a polyester lycra I wouldn't recommend a nylon lycra because that is not really glowing resistant and uh, usually it, it doesn't stay bright and, and nice so uh, don't take that to search for polyester lycra it's not easy to find but you can search online and there are several uh, shops uh, in the UK and in the US that uh, have that search very well because some uh, shops are very expensive and then you can buy, better buy uh, your bikini but you can shop for about um, well seven eight euros so seven eight dollars uh, you must get some some very good fabric the lining is more difficult to uh, to find i have this from an uh, etsy shop uh, it's called uh, emerald ellen i will link it down below uh, she has very good material and all kinds of things you also need to accept from the fabric. This is a very thin foam and it's very nice to line your uh, bikinis with or uh, when you will uh, sew well in jouet. It's very nice material because it gives some shape to your uh, tops and um, it isn't too thick so it, you can shape it very, very well. 
I will leave the, all the materials you need uh, here in the box uh, beside me. Uh, you also need some elastic. Uh, don't use normal elastic, only use uh, swimsuit elastic because the other ones will disappear when you are in a swimming pool with chlorine. So don't use that, always use uh, the only rubberized or plastic uh, elastics. And in this case, I have been searching for a really stretchy elastic because uh, for the ruffles you will need to very much stretch because otherwise it won't ruffle in again. I hope it will turn out too well. It's very difficult to find such an elastic, but when it's not stretchy enough, then we just adjust the pattern. That's so easy because you make it yourself. So you just do what you have and then you can always change it when it's not uh, how you like it. Okay, so uh, we trace uh, the pattern out on the fabric and lining. Uh, then what you do, you cut the lining out of the foam. So you cut two times in fabric, one times in foam. What you do is you uh, mark the apex that you marked on the pattern on your foam. You put uh, a dot there with a marker. Then you hold it up against your chest and you pinch in the foam so that it is uh, touching the, the uh, no, how do you call it? The, the other on the lowest part of the foam is touching your skin. So you pinch it in just as much as needed to the apex. And you get a dart like this. And when you hold it against your chest, it must touch your skin everywhere. The only thing is probably here at the top, it won't touch your skin because it's too wide. But that's no problem because we put elastic in and we can make that as tight as, uh, as is needed. So mark the apex, uh, hold it against your skin and pinch it in until it touches your skin everywhere. The back is easy, it's just two parts of uh, fabric, fabric and the lining part. You can also do the lining in another color, but in this dark color I like the same color. And uh, you don't need any lining here. So for the bottoms it's very easy. Just cut the pattern out twice for a lining and the outside. And the back I only cut out once because my fabric is rather thick. So I don't really need lining in the, in the back, so I did this only once. And let's save some fabric. Okay, so now we're ready to sew. What you're going to do is you're going to put the foam on the lining fabric. You traced where the darts would be. You trace the apex and you're going to uh, fold them together to get the darts. And I always let the apex pin stick out so that I know where I have to sew to. So you pin them together, make sure the fabric is well tucked into the dart. I always trace it with a pen on the foam because you don't see it anyways, the inside and gets uh, between the two fabrics. So you pin this, make sure you take the apex out. And how you're gonna sew, if you're not a professional sew, 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 who, sewster? Toaster, what's the name? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, normally, as you see uh, how I uh, drawn it, it is a triangle. But when you sew, it is more beautiful that you don't do a straight line, but a curved line, because otherwise you get a sort of nipple sticking out here, so it doesn't look nice. Or it gets a dimple, that's only more curious. So you don't sew a straight line. You go almost to the apex, but not quite there so a bit under the apex and then you make a curve to the apex so it's really close to the fold and with that you don't get crazy things here at the apex and you get a really nice smooth finish of the dart so you do that with one lining with foam you do that with the front part the outer part of the um, top and then you can connect the back parts to the side part from the uh, back to the side part of the front. You can sew them from the outer parts uh, both, so the left and the right side. The other part, the lining part, you only sew one side. So off or this side or this side, but not both because we have to turn everything around later on. So that's the next step.
then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut uh, the seam allowance of the uh, dart about half a centimeter or so we've got the foam and the fabric and then you try with a very tiny scissors to cut away as much of the foam as you can but make sure that you don't cut through the sewing thread you just cut away as much as you can because then it will not be too bulky uh, in the dots because you already have three layers so as much as you can cut away the better also when you have done the side seam and you didn't search it then you could uh, cut away a bit of the excess of the foam so that the seam will be a bit uh, thinner so now it's time to fit and try how it uh, how it fits because uh, now you can adjust uh, how tight it is so uh, so the only side seam that you didn't do with a basting stitch so that you can remove it easily and then put the two pieces into each other as, as it would be when you are finishing it so you put the outer layer against the inner layer and then you try it on when you don't like it when it's too loose uh, you can adjust the side seams by making it uh, faster uh, faster by making it smaller so you put some pins in uh, until you feel that it's okay like that and then you can sew a new side seam when it's not tight and when I mean you it's not tight enough but you already can really get in and out then maybe you should consider to make a clasp in the back or make some strings in the back so that you can uh, re detach it well so mine fitted perfectly so i hope yours did too and that you could adjust it easily now we're gonna put the outer and the in the inner and the outer sides together and this is a whole circle we already did the two sides this is open, it only has one side, so you put them together. I have my glasses on because then it's dark color, you can't see that well. Put the uh, side seams together and you pin all around the whole tube, the front and the back until the other side seam and the whole uh, lower part. So you pin this whole side all around and this side all around and the only thing that is open then is this side of the lining we leave that open because we have to turn it around uh, when we have finished this so I'm gonna sew this now the whole circle the upper part and the lower part okay so I'm gonna do this on my serger when you do it on a normal sewing machine then make sure you use a three step zigzag stitch or another stretch stitch so that the fabric will stay stretchy and the thread won't break when you um, use your garment so we're gonna stitch all around the tube on the top and on the bottom I bet you all anxiously waiting when I would find out that I made one side seam uh, too much and yes I found out because I didn't get the tube I promised you so um, well the good thing when you make it yourself you can just undo what you did wrong so I um, seam with the side seam and I have my tube like you had um, but the best thing to do now is uh, try this on so um, pin the side seams together or make a basting stitch just to uh, uh, make this uh, a round circle so you can try it on see how it fits now it's the time to make adjustments uh, I made this part a bit lower because it was too high uh, for me uh, what you have to watch for is uh, especially when you have a bigger cup when you have more than a D cup this side might gap it might uh, stand off from the skin when that is uh, happening what you can do is make it lower or what you can do is uh, put the elastic that we're gonna put on now 
a bit tighter. Don't really push it, stretch it out too much because you don't want the gathering on the top. But you can give it a little tuck to get a bit more uh, uh, strength on the top uh, section and then it will go a bit back to the skin. So uh, try it on, see how it, uh, how it looks, how it fits and make your adjustments uh, what is needed. Now what we're going to do is put the elastic on, on the top and on the bottom. Leave out the side seams because when you uh, put the elastic all the way to the end, then you get bulky when you uh, make the side seams. Just, so not the elastic on the um, seam allowance. So what you're going to do is you sec secure the uh, beginning of the elastic. And what is important when you have, um, when you're making a bikini with lining is how you um, align your elastic. When you have lining, you should align the elastic with the inner uh, stitching. So not with the outer, but with the inner. Uh, I learned it the hard way. It was uh, really, I couldn't find out what the problem was when I turned it inside out. Uh, the finish, the, the seam wasn't neat and I couldn't find the problem. But what it was is that I aligned the elastic with the outer side and then you get the elastic too much on the, in the lining and when you turn it inside out, it, the, need, it, the um, seam isn't neat. So when you have lining, line the elastic up with the inner uh, stitching. When you don't have lining, when you fold it over, as we're going to do with the bottoms, then align the elastic with the outer side. So that's very important. You can um, put the elastic on with a serger. Now, because this is already rather thick, I use a three-step uh, zigzag stitch, and that's a very good uh, stretchy uh, stitch to use for this uh, for this kind of uh, projects. So, put the elastic on the top and the bottom. Oh, and with putting the elastic on, just let the elastic fit itself. Don't tuck on it unless you want to gather it a bit, what I just explained. But normally just give it itself and let it through itself because then you get the neatest finish. Don't tuck unless you have to, just let it fit itself through. Okay, when you've put the elastic on, you turn it inside out. And then the only thing you have to do is close the side seam. Yes, the side seam again, <laughs> but now for real. Um, you can um, sew it all the way around. Uh, first pin one half uh, and sew that. And then you can see how far you can go. It depends a bit on how thick your fabric is, how far you can go. If you can't go all the way, no problem. Then you do half and the other half you do by hand, just by folding it in and sewing it by hand so that you have a perfectly sewn circle without any seams uh, that are uh, visible. And then your top is almost ready. The only thing we have to do is when we are doing it with the bottoms is uh, double stitch this um, uh, uh, bottom part and put the ruffles on the top. But we'll do that together with the bottoms then we can do, can do it uh, in, one, uh, in one row. So just finish side, the side seam and then we'll go on with the bottoms. So now we're going to continue with the bottoms. We have two front pieces, one back because I don't uh, line the back because my fabric is uh, rather thick. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the crotch seam and we do that by sandwiching the back between the two front pieces because then we don't have a visible uh, seam. So we put one um, front part over the back part and the other under it. Then we pin them together. It's difficult to see with this dark fabric, but it's a beautiful color. So we pin this together and then we're going to sew it. And when you've sewn it and you put the two fronts back together, and you see there is no visible seam. When you've done that, we're gonna uh, make the side seams. 
what I think is easiest is before you do that is make a basting stitch along the front uh, leg openings because otherwise it will um, uh, slide against each other and then it's, it's difficult to hold this nice together. You can make pins but I think it's easiest to make a basting stitch and when you've done that then we're doing the side seams, white sides front to the white side of the back, do both the side seams and then we'll come back for the elastic. So now we have nice looking bottoms. I highly advise you to try this on now because um, I think the size will be okay because you measured it already. Um, but I made some really important adjustments because I, I told you I wanted to make it high waisted in the front and in the back. But when I put it on I thought well if I get all the ruffles here on top of it and that is the smallest part of my body. I think that, that won't be too flattering because then it will be bulky just where I am at my smallest and I, I don't think that's a good idea. So I cut off two centimeters from the front, even three from the back. So it's now just below my belly button and then I can make the, the beautiful ruffles around here and the smallest part of my waist will be here. So that will be still visible when you make all the bulky things on your smallest part then you will, will look even thicker than you are. So. Try it on, make adjustments where you need it, where you want it. Uh, look very well how it, uh, how it looks on you, how it suits you. And um, adjust it when you, when you need it, when you want it. When you've done that, just cut off what you have to cut off. Then we're gonna make the uh, elastic around the uh, leg openings. It's just the same as on the top. Uh, put the elastic on the wrong side. Don't tuck on it, just let it go and make it all around the leg opening, one side and the other side. And then we're going to finish it by folding it over to the wrong side and uh, do a, a stitch with the twin needle. And I'll show you that when we have put the elastic on. And when you've done the elastic around the leg holes, you can also do it along the top of the bottoms. So when you have done all the elastic around the leg holes, leg openings, around the waist, then we're gonna top stitch it and we're gonna top stitch it with a twin needle. So it has two needles, hope you can see, two threads. If you're not really familiar with your sewing machine, ask someone who is because it's a little bit tricky to uh, thread it all through. So you have two needles, two threads and that means that you get this sort of a stitch. It is a top stitch with two rows and on the back you can see because I have uh, the serger uh, threads but the back is a zigzag so this uh, will st stay stretchy because of the zigzag on the on the other side. You're gonna uh, top stitch every uh, seam that has the elastic so the top, the two leg holes and also from the uh, top, beginning top, you do the bottom uh, seam and the back uh, top. I don't do the uh, front top because uh, this is already rather thick because of the foam and we put the ruffles on top of it so you don't really see this uh, this side of the seam and I think it's too much if you put another row of threads uh, along this already thick line. So just uh, the bottom of the top and the top uh, top, <laughs> the back top, all with the twin needle top stitch. And just what you do is you fold it over to the wrong side, you make a start somewhere, fold it over to the wrong side and uh, sew it very neat along your pressure foot so that you get a really uh, professional finish. So our bikini is looking nice, bottoms are finished top is finished, now we only have to make the ruffles. Uh, I was lucky because I got to find um, the same color of fabric but a much thinner fabric because uh, I saw in the picture they had the ruffle double folded and my fabric is way too thick to make a double folded ruffle so um, if you have a thicker fabric as I have 
then you should uh, do it uh, one-sided because otherwise it won't ruffle that nicely. But this one is uh, rather thin, so I did it. Um, I cut some strips um, of 12 centimeters height, and I folded them uh, the, set, the edges to the middle. So the down part to the middle, the top to the middle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a basting stitch here down the middle, all the way down. I cut two pieces uh, of the width of the fabric, so two pieces of 150 centimeters, 12 centimeters wide. I connected the two pieces, maybe I need another one, I don't know how much I can gather with the elastic, but then I'll see, I'll cut another one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my elastic, and also there I got lucky, because I found some very stretchy elastic, so I hope I can make the off-the-shoulder version with this one. And when I paste the stitch, the middle uh, seam, I'm going to put the elastic on, and uh, I'm going to stretch as much as I can. Uh, the elastic so that the fabric will ruffle together. So I'm going to try uh, to make as much <coughs> ruffles uh, on the strips as I can and then we'll see how we're going to put it on. If it's possible to put it over the shoulders or if we just have to do the top of the bottom uh, and the top. Uh, so that's the next step. Well that turned out very nice. I'm glad I found that elastic because it's very stretchy now. And I tried it around my shoulders and I can do the off the shoulder now, so I'm happy with that. Uh, so if you, you're not sure if your elastic is uh, stretchy enough, just put the whole thing around your shoulders and see if you can lift your shoulders, see if you can lift your arms. When that's okay, then you can do the off the shoulder. If not, no problem, then you just put the ruffle along the, the top of the top. And you do just this. So what you're going to do now is you're going to measure around your shoulders how much length you need of the ruffle. So I measured mine. I put a pin here somewhere. Where was it? Oh yeah. <coughs> That's what you need for the top. And the rest of it you will use for the top of the bottom. And you have some options here. You can uh, attach this with the sewing machine. I think I'm gonna attach it by hand. I think I have more control over how this will fall and that it will fall neatly. So um, it doesn't matter how you do it, you can do it with the sewing machine. But what you're gonna do is you make a circle out of the length you need. Then you're gonna, it's easiest when you put it on. And then you're gonna pin where you want the uh, ruffle to attach the top of the top. And where to stop because then that's the hole where your arm goes through and then at the back you're connected again where your back starts and you go all the way around until where the other hole for your arm has to be so you're gonna connect gonna, gonna connect this to the top and the other half I have to cut it there's my pin the other part you're gonna connect to the top of the bottom same way just make a circle out of it or you don't even have to make a circle out of it because this is just going all the way around make sure it's not uh, turned around like see here it's twisted so make sure when you're attaching it that's why I think I'm gonna do it by hand then I have some more control go all the way around <coughs> along the top of the bottom and then you have a really cute ruffle I like it that it's uh, doubled now it's <coughs> folded together um, if you didn't if you had uh, the thick uh, fabric and you have just an, an ankle strip that will be nice too because that's the ruffle we normally make with clothing so that's that's possible too it's just what you like but I saw that this picture has this uh, folded one so I liked it so attach this and then we're finished so this is the end result I really like how it came out the ruffles are very nice I can reach my arm, that is nice, yes, very satisfied with how it looks. I'm glad I made this lower and this lower, because otherwise it would really be too high on the waist and the waffles would make this all bulky and this makes it a bit more flattering when it was higher, it was a bit too stiff I think, so yes, I'm very glad. I hope yours worked, turned out well too.
nice project thank you so much for watching uh, i'll see you again next week with a new uh, topic to do